Here are solutions to homework set number 5 for ECE 376. The first problem is to use a keypad and the NeoPixel together. So here's what I want to do. So here I've got a keypad connected to port C. Um, I actually forgot to bring my keypad home, so I'm just going to hotwire it. I've got the columns, so I'm doing the second column and the row. So if you input the number 23 and hit the button that sets the brightness. So this is 23 out of 255. Make the brightness 123. Now the new pixel is brighter. And put the number 233. It's really bright. So how do I do that? So first I'm going to start with the flowchart. I'm going to initialize the I.O. Um, port. Well, port B is input for the push buttons. <clears throat> I've got port C as bits uh, 0, 1, and 2 as output. Those are the columns. The rest are input. So I want to initialize the ports. I'll then read the keypad. If I have the number 0 through 9, I will read that as just a number. If I hit RB0, I'm going to update the NeoPixel. So as I'm in inputting numbers, I update the LCD. And that's where you see the numbers like 1, 2, 3. Hit RB0. I will update the NeoPixels, then repeat. The C code, kind of leave that up to you for programming. Kind of what I would do is take a program that works, probably the most complicated one, would be the keypad routine. Modify the keypad routine. Add the subroutines for the NeoPixel. And then as I hit the different keys on the keypad, for example, if I go to Embedded Systems, here's sample code that will get you started. If I start with the keypad routine, this will let me read the different numbers on the keypad. Down here, I've got input the number, a push command, sets up the registers. This is clear it. Add if temp equals 12, that's RB0. If I hit RB2, if I hit RB0 or temp equals 12, do something. In that case, I'm going to take whatever's in X and update red, green, blue on the NeoPixel, then call NeoPixel Display. So that's kind of how it works. When all is said and done, the resulting code is 3,860 lines or bytes. Divide by 2 gives you lines of assembly. So that was 1930 lines of assembly, more than I really want to do by hand. Also going to tell us you we're really not challenging the pick. The pick can do a whole lot more, which is good when you get to senior design. And you're going to want to do a whole lot more with your pick. In terms of validation, there's a couple ways to validate. What I could do is just input the numbers, and the number 00 works, 255 works, number 123 works. Typically, you check the two endpoints and a couple points in the middle. Uh, another way to check, I'm going to input a couple numbers the two endpoints and a couple points in the middle, and just observe. It's off, dim, really bright. Another way to check that is I could use an ammeter. Measure the current drawn by the NeoPixel, and that's kind of what I did here. I've got the NeoPixel, the power goes to my ammeter to the NeoPixel, so I can measure the current draw. As when the LEDs are turned off, it draws 7 milliamps, that's apparently the current it needs just to uh, power up. There is a microprocessor on it, even if the NeoPixels aren't running, it's drawing current. As I increase the brightness, the current draw goes up. And what it should be, if I define this to be 0%, that to be 100%. As I vary the brightness, this is how much current it actually consumed. If I do it based upon the number, this is how bright it should be, 5 out of 255. 255 out of 255. And kind of notice the current is matching up. So it does look like I am varying the current, and for LEDs, current is brightness. That is correct. And a demo on to problem number five. In this one, I want to find out how long it takes to do an analog input. So here's the code that I'm looking at. How long does this take? So one trick is to pick a pin you're not using, like port C, actually all of port C. 
um, toggle it, and then measure the frequency that appears on that pin. So if I do that on port C pin 4, it is 963 hertz. As I move to the right, each one's times 2. So if this is 963 hertz, uh, this will be times 2, times 4. When you go over to RC0, the one I care about, that'll be times 16. So RC0 should be about 15.4 kilohertz. <clears throat> that tells me the execution time. Uh, 10 million divided by 2 times frequency is 324 clocks. So it takes about 324 clocks to do a single A to D read, and probably should subtract 16, because from before, just setting up that loop is about 16 clocks. So 300-ish, about 30 microseconds to do an A to D read. Problem number six. If I have an analog input, I'll read a number. Suppose that number is 713. What's that mean? Well, that means the voltage. 5 volts is 1,023, 0 volts is 0, 713 is that percentage of full reading, that percentage of 5 volts, Vx is 3.48 volts. It's a funny looking 3 there. Uh, the resistance, I know from voltage division, <coughs> Vx is a function of R. Solving backwards, I have R as a function of voltage. R is apparently 2300 ohms. If this is a thermistor, I know that R is 2300 ohms. Solve backwards for T, I get 7.19 degrees Celsius. So again, the pick is a voltmeter, it's an ohmmeter, it's a temperature sensor. Now, the last problem is a combination lock. Okay, so here's the idea. What I want to do is have a combination lock. As I turn the potentiometer, the analog input, the number that I'm inputting changes. So I input the number 0 through 20. To push the number on, onto the stack, I hit this. So I think the combination is 13, 19, 9. I'll adjust the number with the potentiometer, store it with RBs. RB0, then to check the combination, hit RB1. It says, nope, that was the wrong combination. The correct combination, bring the stepper motor over so you can see it, is 3, 2, 1. A completely original combination. No one is ever going to guess that one. So start out with 3, 2, one. Try that combination. If correct, the stepper motor turns 180 degrees, opens the door, then turns back. Okay, so that's the idea. How do I do it? Uh, well, to do that, I'm going to... Well, here's my requirements. I'm going to have the analog input, the push buttons, stepper motor, I turn the pot to set the number, push RB0 to lock that number, RB1 to test the combination. If correct, rotates 180 degrees at 10 milliseconds a step, pauses 2 seconds, then goes back. So first part is the flowchart. So here's the flowchart. I first initialize all the I.O. I read the analog input, and if I do nothing, just display the number. If I hit RB0, I push that number onto the stack. Hit RB1, I check. If the number is correct, I open the lock, wait two seconds, close the lock. Otherwise, I clear the combo and go back. So there's the flowchart. In terms of the C code, the resulting C code is 5,440 bytes, or 2,720 lines of assembly. Again, I do not want to write this in assembly. The C code itself isn't too bad. Kind of what I did is I copied and pasted this from some code that had the analog input. I need that subroutine. I copy and pasted this part of the code that initializes the A to D to turn it on. And then kind of borrowed code from the keypad. Forever and ever, I'm going to read the analog input. And this just inputs the numbers 0, correction, 1 to 20. That's my combination numbers. If I had RB0, 
push those numbers onto the stack. If I hit RB1, if it's the correct combination, 1, 2, 3, then I'll step the motor forward 100 steps, wait, step backwards 100 steps. Clear. And if nothing else, I just display the raw A to D number and my current combination that I'm testing. So again, kind of what that does, maybe, is I input the numbers. So there's three, two, one, test. If correct, it spins 180 degrees, then comes back. Uh, validation is go back to the requirements. Whatever's in the requirement belongs in the validation. I input the numbers 1 to 20. That works. I want to hit RB0. The numbers get pushed on the stack. That works. A correct combination causes the motor to open, pause, then go back. Incorrect combination does nothing. Plus a demo. So that's homework set number 5 for ECE 376. Oop, we got a kitten here.